I'm going to talk a little bit about ventilation first because this is an area where we haven't really thought much about in dentistry in the past, but there are existing guidelines for inpatient healthcare settings such as hospitals that can be used to try to guide us in the considerations for ventilation um, in the control of aerosols. So some of the recommendations include properly maintaining your ventilation system. And by that, they mean changing your filters regularly, ensuring that vents aren't um, obstructed by other materials that shouldn't be there, such as stacked boxes. And if possible, have a ventilation system that provides air movement from a clean area to a contaminated area. And if you're going to do any kind of modifications on your HVAC system, this would be making sure that the flow direction is installed and properly maintained. They're certainly not saying that every dental office has to run out and hire an engineer to come in and redo your HVAC system, but it's one of the things that you could consider, especially if you were already thinking about upgrading your HVAC. You could consult a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning professional to investigate increasing your filtration efficiency, efficiency to the highest level compatible. And the reason that they recommend that you consult a professional is that you can perhaps buy higher level filters for your system, for your existing system. And for regular filters, those are, um, the designation is a MERV, M-E-R-V, M-E-R-V being the 13 being the highest level. But when you use a higher level filter, it can impact the function of your HVAC system. So you want to make sure that you're not using something that's going to damage or destroy your system um, because it does, but because it occludes the air too much. Some people wonder too about um, how many air exchanges per hour are needed to clear a room from uh, small particulates. And there is a a table that's provided in one of the other CDC guidelines. It's the Infection Control Guidelines um, Environmental Control. And if you look at this chart, you'll see that it's not a direct correlation between the number of air exchanges and how, many, how much time is required to remove um, particulates. For instance, if you had an ACH, which, which means air exchanges per hour of two, you would think, well, that means that the air changes over every 30 minutes. But that's not exactly the way that it works, as you can see by this chart. Um, many places will have an, a very common air exchange per hour is six, and that would take 46 minutes for 99% of the air to be exchanged in that room um, with that number of air exchanges per hour. And that's not to say necessarily that you have to leave a room empty for that many minutes. Um, it's just saying that if you want to know how long it takes to completely change over the air in a room, this chart will give you that information. Some of the new things that the CDC guidelines have indicated that we should be considering in dental settings is um, enhancing our ventilation capability by perhaps um, using some portable HEPA filters. And HEPA filters are high efficiency particulate air um, filters that will filter 99.97% um, of particulates that are 0 0.3 microns in diameter. So um, you can make sure that you're using a true HEPA filter if you are going to use one of these because there are some that are out there that may be labeled as HEPA-like or HEPA-type, but it needs to be a true HEPA to be able to filter to that level. If you are going to install these types of things or, or use these types of portable filtering units, you want to make sure that they don't draw the air from the patient's mouth across the dental health care personnel's faces. So you want to position it properly. One of the other new recommendations that they've made um, is considering the use of what's called upper room ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, or it's usually, um, it's usually shortened and they use the acronym UVGI. This is where you have these um, ultraviolet lights that are installed in the upper part of the room near the ventilation because uh, UV at a certain range will inactivate um, uh, microorganisms. And so this would be an adjunct to your existing ventilation system where as the air is drawn through that um, it would also be uh, inactivating certain numbers of microorganisms. These have to be done carefully though, and you have to understand the error flow dynamics in the office. So you would probably want to consult with somebody with expertise before installing these. Another, um, other uh, variables such as the number of air exchanges per hour can also affect the efficiency of these types of, uh, these, these UVGIs, because if you have more ex air exchanges per hour, then the, um, the 
the particulates don't have as much contact with the UV and it may not be as efficient. This is just a diagram I came across that showed one way to place a ventilation system. I put the red box there, but you can see that in this one, the air is drawn across the patient, past the dental assistant, and into the ventilation system on the wall. Um, and that's the improper way to, to create your airflow in the office. You want the airflow to go from, from uh, clean to contaminated and not the other way around. So if you were going to use, say, a, a portable HEPA filter unit, you would want to place it next to, as close to the patient as you can, but in an area where it's not going to draw air across the face of the dental health care personnel. Patient placement is another consideration regarding um, airflow, and that is, number one, if you have individual patient rooms, use those whenever possible. But we know that many dental facilities have open floor plans um, and then to prevent the spread of any pathogens in that type of a setting, be sure that there's at least six feet of space between patient chairs. And if there isn't, if you can either reconfigure the space that you do have or maybe temporarily not use all of the chairs at once. You can consider the use of physical barriers between patient chairs. So things like portable walls or plexiglass plexiglass units, but be careful because you want to make sure that those don't interfere with any fire sprinkler system. And also, if they go all the way to the ceiling, you could interfere with the airflow in the space. So you want to make sure that you're not blocking off any vents or creating a, a setting where you're not getting any airflow in the patient care area. If it's possible, and you should orient your operatories parallel to the direction of airflow. And wherever it's feasible, consider patient orientation carefully. You can do things like place the patient's head near the return air vents, or you could prioritize the chairs that are near return air vents for aerosol generating procedures. Also, um, orient the patient's head away from pedestrian corridors and towards the rear wall so that when you're doing aerosol generating procedures, it's being contained within that space. Um, and, and that's when you're using those vestibule type office light layouts where as people walk through the office, they're walking back and forth in front of the doors that open into the, to the um, dental operatories, particularly when there's no doors on those um, uh, entryways. Some other additional considerations to think about is what is the patient volume that's going to allow you to provide safe care? Taking into consideration these personal distances of six feet apart and also the recommendation to wait at least 15 minutes after the completion of dental treatment and departure of a patient to begin cleaning and disinfecting the room. And that's just to allow things to settle a bit. So um, can you have patients wait in the car and you text them when it's time to come in? Um, can you make sure that people are not bringing unnecessary visitors? You know, for one child's visit, you don't need to bring the whole family, bring one parent. And if people do bring visitors that say a, a couple comes and one member of one of them is having dental treatment done and the other one isn't, ask the other one to wait outside or in their car instead of waiting in the office where you need space for your patients.